Yo, what's going on, everybody, man? It's your boy Marcus Elbow from ElbowMediaStudios.com. Welcome to Elbow Media Studios YouTube channel. And today we're about to get ready to have a real true discussion. Now, I've had this discussion before, but today I want to really and truly look at the intricate details between producing in a standalone environment and producing in a DAW environment. Let's talk about it. Elbow Media Studio. Check this out. Before we get started, I need you to do a favor for me. Go ahead on and hit that subscription button, hit that like button, bro, and go ahead on and smash that notification bell. So whenever I drop videos like this, you'll be the first notified. All right. All right. So um, I, I get asked this a lot, you know, from a lot of different people about, um, you know, what what would I recommend? Would I recommend the standalone environment or would I recommend the DAR environment? For me, sometimes that's a hard question to answer. And I'm going to tell you why. For the last 10, 11 ish years, I've been producing solely on Reason. And if you're not familiar with Reason, Reason is a DAW that was created by a company called Propeller Head. And this DAW to me is one of the best DAWs ever. I love the interface, I love the way it felt. It felt like you were in an analog environment uh, with a digital environment, it had that studio feel. I just love the way Reason worked and it worked for me for years. I did a lot of music on it. I produced, I recorded artists. I did everything on it. I used to work on Pro Tools, but when Reason came out with the ability to record, that was something that I wanted to be, uh, you know, I wanted, I was interested in. So I went on ahead and I started recording in Reason uh, and then got away from uh, Pro Tools. Even though I kept up with Pro Tools, I just, me personally, I just love recording in Reason. So. Uh, here about five years ago, um, the iPad started coming along and the iPad started giving, you know, others and, you know, music lovers the ability to make music on the iPad. Now, I know you're probably thinking, wait a minute, is that a standalone environment? Because it's not really a computer, but it kind of is. So that's the kind of weird thing about uh, this whole dilemma between standalone and using a computer so anyway i started working on the ipad and i thought the ipad was amazing it gave me something that i didn't think i would ever care to have portability um i was able to take beatmaker 3 or nano studio 2 or cubases or whatever and i could go sit on my couch and i could make music you know what i mean and not be tethered to a computer and that hadn't happened for me Never. You got to remember when I used to produce back in the day. Well, I, I take that back. I was in a standalone environment in the 90s. But as of recent, I was in a door environment. So I was always, a, you know, tethered to a laptop or a PC or a Mac. So when I got the iPad, right, this did something that I did not think uh, I needed. And that gave me portability. When I when I start getting used to the portability, I really fell in love with it. I fell in love with the fact that I could make music anywhere. I could take my music somewhere and besides having it on a disc or a thumb drive, I could physically have it in my hand, let artists hear the music. They would get excited about the iPad for one, and then they would get excited about the fact that it sounded so good coming out of a machine that nobody expected that that could do that you know what i mean i fell in love with the portability so what i did was i decided you know what i think i'm gonna go ahead and buy an mpc because i want to see if this thing really is amazing as it feels on the ipad so i bought an mpc and i started producing on the mpc now i'm gonna be honest with you at first when i started producing on the mpc it did feel limiting because i wasn't a sampler a sample based producer so i was really kind of like i like the drums but i'm gonna run back to the iPad or I'm going to run to reason because I want to have more at my disposal, just drums. And again, I wasn't sampling. So just drums and the onboard sounds just felt like it wasn't enough. So that first year I was still running back to the dog, but then I bought the force, the Akai force. And this changed everything because now I'm starting to sample more. I started sampling before I got the force, but it seems as if when I got the force, for some reason, me and sampling kind of clicked. 
well, for one, I got better at it. But for two, uh, the force just made me want to sample, made me want to bring different elements in in a sampling environment, unlike what the NPC did for me. But the force made me appreciate the NPC. I, I don't want to get, get out of the realm of what we're talking about here, but I'm just giving you uh, a, a kind of a, a blueprint or giving you some history behind how I got to this point and why I think I'm the perfect person to answer this question do you which one would you prefer and is one better than the other so creating on the force has been wonderful it has been amazing and before i go any further let me let y'all know right now if you're looking for any gear you, you wanting to get a force you want to get an npc or even a doll you need to run over to zounds man i got links inside of the description you can go over there get approved get a, a, some credit checks or you could just buy it straight out but they have unlimited amounts of equipment Anything that you see on this channel or in my studio, I've bought from Zounds. So make sure you use that link. It helps support the channel and go grade some gear. But moving on, um, the force has been wonderful. Um, the arranger on the force is cool. Just being transparent. I don't really use the arranger a lot. I like the fact that it's there. I know it's a lot of people out there that praise the arranger. I think it's cool, but I just don't really use it um, because I'm not really dropping vocals or anything like that. And for the person that's dropping the vocals, I can see how that could be a wonderful thing for them because, again, that is truly a standalone device. So with all that being said, right, I have been in a standalone mode for a couple of years now. I haven't really did a lot on the door, even though I'm learning Studio One version six and five. Um, I, I still go to the door for mixing. But the question that I want to pose back to you, and I want y'all to get in the comments and help me, recording in a door gives you way more flexibility when it comes to vocals. I mean, I could do vocals on the iPad, but the the software hasn't caught up with the with the technology so in my opinion i don't think there's really a argument between the standalone and dolls i just think that they are companions you can make music on anything now that that's the crazy part about it with npcs and the force you could be limited but it's a great limitation the limits that that are put on you with these machines allow you to create in a smaller environment which makes you create to me better because you're not bogged down with all these sounds and all these different things plugins and all this and and you're not you know overthinking the music you're just making the music but the great part about that is you can make a complete beat in standalone using the npc or using um, the akai force but you could also take that music to the next level by bringing it into a doll like Reason, Studio One, Ableton, or whatever, and you can enhance what you already know. So why limit yourself to just standalone or limit yourself to just a doll? Because me personally, the doll is, oh, you're always tethered. So I think that's the problem that a lot of people have. They don't want to be tethered. So you have the iPad that you can make music on that gets you away from that tether. You have the MPC or the Akai Force, or they have other uh, devices out there like the SP404 Mark II or whatever, where you don't have to be tethered to the dog. But then once you create those great beats that you're making, you could take those beats, bring them over to a DAW and further enhance them, bring them up to a level in which you know if you don't think that they're ready enough and most standalone people think that they're ready but the mixing capabilities that you can find in a doll and don't get me wrong don't beat me up in the comments i know that i can mix on the akai force trust me but the environment that a doll has that i'm so used to because again i started out producing in a doll gives me a, a a more comfortable environment for me to mix and to really hone in that sound that I'm trying to achieve and I'm not limited on that aspect. But as far as the limitations that these machines put me through when I'm making the beat, it's okay with me because it allows me to really create and it gives me tunnel vision where I'm not getting lost in these all of these sounds and, and plugins. But when I bring those stems into a DAW environment, 
I feel even more powerful because the music was already good. But now, since I'm in a dark environment, I can take that music to the next level if that's what's needed, or I can have vocals at it, or I can do whatever. This is how I personally feel. I feel that no one should limit themselves intentionally. You should not do that. If you have the resources, if you get you a laptop and you're, you have the ability to have a DAW like Reason, like Studio One, like Ableton, so forth and so on, do not limit yourself. If you have an MPC, you already know the MPC comes with software that you can use there. And you also have the Akai Force that can work with Ableton. You can take projects from the Akai Force, bring them directly into Ableton and continue working. Do not limit yourself. Always give yourself the ability to maximize your sound and always, you know, take your music to the next level. There's no reason, no pun intended, for you to limit yourself. So this discussion about, you know, is standalone better than the darn environment, blah, blah, blah. To me, it depends on what you're doing. If you're making, you know, a full production and you have vocals, you have an artist, you have this. To me, you have to have a DAW to do that. If you're just a music producer and you're just banging out beats, I don't believe that you need a computer for anything. And to be honest, you can just use a mixer or something like from a standalone standpoint, you can use something like the Model 12 and you can pretty much do everything in that environment. But again, if you have a computer, what what is the big deal? If you're doing vocals, then don't limit yourself. If you want to add a mix that you feel would be, you know, industry ready, then use a DAW if you have to or send it off. But at the end of the day, to me, coming from a person that has been in a DAW environment for about 10 years, I've been in a standalone environment for about five years. I like them both as a companion, as a complement to one another. And I believe that in this day and age with music just being so plentiful, so many different ways for you to create music via the iPad, via standalone, all these different dope machines, we're in the golden era of making music. So don't limit yourself. Man, listen, I appreciate you watching this video. And if you made it to the end, man, that's dope, man. Thank you for holding, hanging out with me. Listen, my name is Marcus Elbow. This has been Elbow Media Studios, man. Don't trip, bro, if you want to go hang out with us go over to elbowmediastudios.com we got gear over there we got shirts over there we got sound packs we got any and everything you could possibly want when it comes to music and again get down in the description go to zounds if you want to just click on the description i have like a whole freaking list of everything that i have in my studio so if you're just curious about what i like to use then dump, jump down there and check that out okay all right man i will catch y'all in the next video it ain't nothing but love keep creating keep doing what you do it doesn't really matter man how you do it as long as you love what you're doing all right all right man i'll catch y'all later one peace i'm out